why you said that. I almost <laughs> choked. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting name. But no, I, I do think um I I would say like in terms of like the Borto series, maybe missing some of those political and philosophical elements. Um, if, if you think that there is something indeed missing from the Boruto series in comparison to the Naruto one, but I do think the Naruto one would probably, I would say it's definitely political and definitely uh, philosophical for sure, uh, which is interesting mm -hmm. for like a shonen. Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I have to like compare it to other shonen. I would say it, 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 it has those elements. Would you, would you compare like Attack on Titan to the shonen? Yeah, I wouldn't say I've, it has. I've never it, seen I wouldn't say it's the Titan. point. I'd say it only has those elements. I can repeat that. It, it has those elements, but I don't think it's the point. When you break it down to the soul of the show, what the core of it is about, it's not about those political elements. It just has those on top of it. Well, what would you say is the point? Of Boruto? To be a continuation Wait, you, which of one were Naruto. you talking about? Yeah, I was talking about Naruto and Boruto. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... What's the what, what's the underlying point? Do you think of uh, the Naruto series in particular? Uh, it depends whether or not it's Tuesday. What my answer is going to be? Uh, the point of the Naruto series what? is a very interesting. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's a saying. It, it, the point of the Naruto series, uh, for what I'll say off the top of my head for right now, it's about the perseverance of humanity. What it means to endure. How about that? Is that a good answer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> tangentially related to that while you guys are setting that up i got a question for y'all does the boruto series stand on its own as a good series be honest shout out on Lon Lona. well it sounds like you read a comment so he did yeah so you talking about like if naruto never existed and we just had to go into boruto like would it stand alone on its own that's an even without the better you know way influence of naruto yeah i was thinking if we just never watched naruto <laughs> but no if naruto just never existed in the first but that's the best way of thinking of it yeah so you would have to rewrite everything like you wouldn't even because because then the, the question shifts to like it, it literally forces us to do a rewrite of this of the show so then like any answer that we would give becomes kind of irrelevant so there's our answer honestly no <laughs> oh, i gotta act on a hammer again <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, honestly, no, yeah, I think it would be, because it wouldn't even function. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, yeah it's kind of hard to tell anyways, because, you know, we all started watching Boruto as fans of Naruto, so. Yeah. Only reason why I gave it a chance in the first place, well, me, me personally, anyway. I'm, is your, is the stream, like, going? I'm I'm sorry, um, never, never mind, never mind, we might do that particular thing, never mind. Um. But yeah, no, maybe to, to your other question, like, to the heart of it, do I think Borto is a, as a series kind of stands on its own in as far as I can measure that without Naruto as, a, as like a series? I would say, I think so. I, I think the Borto series is pretty, pretty good, all things considered. There, there is some depth missing there. So it, it kind of prevents it from elevating to, I would say, naruto's level like naruto and shippuden like that level of just quality like literature i i don't think it's possible for it to elevate that high simply because even if you you take all like you know the dope fights and stuff like that and the this or that it's still going to lack that depth and that's what really gets that that's what really in my opinion takes a series from being you know good to like legendary or or iconic when you can like quote the you know cycle of hatred stuff, that is a different level versus hey you know Himawari just had a really cool power up and a really cool fight with like the the main antagonist at the moment or sorry to dodge the Chidori like a a lot of the conversation around Borto right now is a lot of power scaling exactly look at what we're about to do and it's not a lot of like analyzing or breaking down the actual like material itself like yeah. the uh, the plot or whatever the case may be. There's some of that, sure, but I don't, I don't see like the bulk of that being the case. And I think maybe that kind of highlights a, a bit of a weakness when we're just really more so interested in who can beat who or like what new abilities or, you know, scaling and all this stuff. And I think that's probably for a reason, but that's just my take on it. I 100% agree. In fact, 
uh, for anyone listening, in case you haven't subscribed to the Walkie Talkie podcast, great time to do that. I've done that on Walkie Talkie podcast, break it down from the not power scaling perspective, from the narrative screenwriting perspective, me and Kamui. Uh, we got a couple of videos about the Shinju coming up. We've done a couple of videos on Kwaki. Those are coming up as well. And finally, narratively, we recently did a couple of videos about the story of Two Blue Vortex and what's the point of Two Blue Vortex, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are all pretty good narrative videos. Even some previous stuff, we've covered that from narrative perspective, such as like why Enogene's fake out death even occurred in the first place, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from the perspective of the writing. So very interesting stuff. Go check that out and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you very much. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> when a Want to give them a little taste of your opinion here? Just something they they can you know chew well, okay. on a little bit. Something you said was interesting, uh, especially the a lot of people bringing down from the power scaling perspective because uh, there was a Boruto stream <clears throat> I was watching from another YouTuber recently. I forget exactly who it was, but it was like a power scaler, and they were saying how they loved like Two Blue Vortex, um, and like their one piece of evidence that they pointed to. I'm going to like misquote it, but I don't remember it exactly. It was about, I think it was how strong Boruto looked. And they're, they're like, this is their evidence for why Boruto to Blue Vortex has been good and enjoyable from, for them from the writing perspective. I think that's interesting. They're not even looking at it from like the actual writing perspective. It's almost like Dragon Ball Shonen to where it's not about the story because the the shonen elements are so intertwined into the narrative to where they almost become a part of it in and of itself. Mm. I don't I think, think I, it, I don't think it supplements the material, but I think it can complement it to such a degree to where you don't have to be aware of the material as long as it isn't absent. So as long as there's writing elements at play, whether good or bad, if the power scaling is enjoyable, I think that's enough to make a series good for certain people, which is very interesting. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, like, do you, do you think the people who kind of just look at it for, because I was going to say, like, maybe look at it, like, look at it as a valuable series for its more surface level elements, but even that might be, like, loaded, because it's maybe surface level from my perspective and from their perspective, and it, it may be the entire reason why they're even engaging with the material but just from my perspective i'll say um do, do you think it's bad that that seems to be the thing that a lot of people are trending towards not the plot or, or anything like that but more so like what i would consider the surface level stuff like the power skilling the abilities and stuff like that right i think it can get annoying if you look at it from a negative lens but if you look at it from a more i don't know what this word means but i'm gonna use it holistic perspective then i think it becomes a little bit different i think if they're looking at it from like the surface level perspective obviously you can say it's like ignorant or whatever because i for anyone watching my channel you know i just love the title x makes no sense so i'll have it like boruto makes no sense kawaki makes no sense etc etc people in the comment section obviously are going to be like it does make sense are you not considering this obvious thing well no I am considering that. Oh, you're making it too complicated. That's the difference. They're not making it complicated enough because they refuse to look at the series beyond the surface level. They're not looking at the nuances or anything. Like with Karama's death, there's a lot of conversation there about him being revived. And everyone's like, oh, are you forgetting? It was stated in Shippuden that they come back. That's not the point because you have to look at beyond just that to look at the actual conversation being had. And, what, and what's that conversation, do you think? Like, if you had to make, like, an an appeal to the, the, the plot of TBV so far, like, a, a, a appeal to a person and, like, say, hey, like, like, there is, number one, there is a plot here that is is good. And then, like, number like, here's what it is. Like, what, what would you say? Like, what would you, how would you break it down so far? Like, what are the appealing parts of it? It's funny you say that. Um, I have already done this. If I had to do it again, it would take me six hours because it took me six hours the first time. <laughs> um, if you... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. If it took you six hours the first time, you should definitely be faster this time because <laughs> you already know what you're going to say, right? All right well, I'd say this first arc <laughs> is a lot about identity, which is a lot of what Naruto is about, especially the first part of the work. I want to break that down pretty soon coming up. Um, 
but it's about identity from a lot of different perspectives. You got the omnipotence angle between Kawaki and Boruto. You have Sarada and Sumire fighting against omnipotence. You have Mitsuki and Ada's conversation. In a way, that's about their identity. And then obviously the Shinju trying to find their identity when I believe they actually already have it. So it's about looking through their perspective, how they're going about it, and how they're almost running away from something else. I think all these different angles, as well as you got a couple other examples. You got Delta being Akabi and Amado shenanigans there about identity. You got Shikamaru. Is he going to become Hokage or is he going to continue fighting against Boruto? All these different angles about identity. I think it works pretty brilliantly if you break it down. The problem is, I'm afraid that you need a video essay to do the analysis because I think it's not currently in the series. I think the series should be able to stand on its own without me having to explain why it's good. For example, you don't need some YouTube video essay to explain to you why the scene of Sasuke unlocking his three Tomoe Sharingan is good. The series itself already has that in it for you. It's more or less obvious as opposed to the Shinju finding their identity. I feel like the series hasn't made it clear yet why that's quote unquote good. I think that's an interesting perspective. Do you, do you have a take on that for you before I go? I suppose not. Sorry, I'm trying to work on my audio. Just like, yeah. give me a minute. Uh, adding on to that really quick, Mel, yeah. is I think yeah. you have to look at scenes in Naruto or Boruto as iconic landmarks. So, for example, when I mentioned the three Tomoe Sharingan, what makes that scene good isn't the three Tomoe Sharingan, but that's something tangible I can point to. It's the hype, but it's shallow surface level. It's empty on its own. It's the sprinkles on top of the ice cream, whereas the ice cream is the narrative. It's the base layer, and you can't just skip the base layer. The sprinkles makes the ice cream better, but you can't eat the sprinkles by themselves. And I feel like that's what Boruto, especially Tubular Vortex, has been lacking. It's giving you just the sprinkles, just the hype, without something to back it up. Something actually substantially there, if that makes sense. So what... So if you were to remove what you call the hype, and you, and and, I would, and I've never seen Two Blue Vortex, and I'm asking you, what is this like about? Like like, what's the appeal here? How would you like go about? Yeah. How would so, you go about explaining that to me? I would go about explaining it in a different way from how the series is going about explaining it, because I believe as of right now, the series hasn't asked any questions. It hasn't really developed many themes. It's even difficult, arguably, to point to who the main character or protagonist is supposed to be at least of this first arc. And so I could break it down, but the problem is if you go into the series, you would have to go based off of my breakdown because I don't think the series itself is giving you that as of right now anyways. So for example, looking at Naruto part one, you have the Land of Waves. What that is about, it's about Zabuza and Naruto's clash of ideology. What does it mean to be a shinobi? The bridge building mission is so removed from the story, it's the plot element to surface the story, to service it, to get to the story, that it's almost unimportant in a way. It's the important thing going on, but it isn't what's really going on. What's going on there is about what it means to be a shinobi, and that difference of philosophy between the protagonist and antagonist. I think Bortutubu Vortex is lacking that. It's making the conceptual bridge-building mission the point, which I think they need to remove that entirely. Okay. So as that pertains to Boruto. To Blue Vortex, yeah. So. Yeah. So, so, so... So what about how... You're basically pertains- using the land of... Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm asking. Okay, like, okay. so, were you because because if you were using the Land of Waves arc as like um a, a kind of way of explaining concepts that aren't like being presented in the TBV series so far, I kind of missed that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, how how does that pertain to like Borto? Well, I think every if that story, was what you were doing, every story at its core needs a question, a theme, a lesson to teach its audience. I feel like. Boruto Tubu Vortex hasn't really been asking questions, at least 
they, they're not spelling it out to the audience to where I think to some extent they need to. Like again, with Naruto, what does it mean to be a shinobi? That's what that first arc is about. And then that's the overarching theme that leads to the rest of the series, which is why I think this first arc is very important. It's not about the developing themes that go arc by arc. It's about the overall theme because it's the first arc in the series. It sort of has to do that, establish that. And so I feel like comparing the first arc of both series is very important for that regard. I feel like they're not doing that. So I don't know what to expect going forwards. I think that's I think that's some I think that's some damn good analysis, Udi. Oh, thank you. Damn good analysis. <laughs> I'm thinking because I didn't really think about it on that level at all, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually really interesting. A question asked, like, because that's that's true. Because like, I'm 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 trying to wonder, like, what is that question being asked? And I try to like overlay like what you were talking about with identity on top of that, but yeah, because because if I t- if I take a look at like. Like you said, Zabuza and Naruto. That's where the story like, is. Because that's where the conflict like, is. Like, yeah, like you can see like one character is Zabuza as presenting like the Shinobi world in one light. Or at least, you know, how he fits in it. And Naruto's like rejecting like what is put forth. It's, it's almost like a debate. Yeah. Right? Like. Yeah, like, yeah, so there's this back and forth occurring um, throughout the series, which kind of comes to, like, I think a crescendo around when Zabuza starts to break down and whatnot. But if I'm thinking about the Boruto series, I'm not getting that back and forth necessarily. And if I am, I'm trying to think about where it would be. Yeah. Um, So with Naruto, oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, yeah, real quick. I was going to say, because I think, Maybe because they don't have like a villain to anchor, like a villain that already has like their their kind of ideology solidified or their beliefs solidified to even be challenged to begin with to anchor the series because the Shinju are so new, they're trying to figure things out. But I think what's what's kind of funny is like they already have such distinct personalities already, yeah. but they haven't like come to that conclusion. So, like, in the process of trying to find themselves, right, they're revealing themselves. So, that I think that's, but but not to themselves. So, I think that's kind of interesting. But because they are, like, that kind of archetypical character, I would say, I don't think that they even, themselves can even put forth the question that can even be answered or a conclusion that can be refuted. Um, so, I, because if I take a look at, like, like Borzo, it's just like Boruto seems to, at the very least, wanted to destroy the Ten Tails because it was going to do something bad. But there's no like ideological like conflict there, and, and there's a lot of mysteries like surrounding what the bad was even, what, what it even was, or, or what or how it would even come about. So we can't even like, yeah, like we don't even know what what questions would be asked, or or. Like, how would Borto as, like, a, a character in the series even refute what was being presented? Because we don't even know what's presented because it's, like, shrouded in mystery. And then we have, like, I'm thinking Code. is he's There's definitely nothing that he's, like, really presenting. He's almost like a joke character. He's not actually trying to answer any questions presented because there doesn't seem to be any. The Shinju can't present any questions. Himawari doesn't know what the fuck's going on, although she's trying to find out, but she fails. Sarada's trying to find stuff out. It's, it just seems like all the characters that you would think would be in like the Naruto role, they don't, they're not given anything clear or, or, or de- like, you know, decisive. So they don't even know how to even respond in a, like a um, story sense. Exactly. They're still trying to ask questions to figure shit out. So it's kind of interesting that, you know. Staying on the same wavelength, in part one, Naruto, there's one main character. The story revolves around Naruto. In Two Blue Vortex, it's in the title. There could be two or more main characters. It sounds almost uh, oxymoronic, but it's it's possible. You just have to provide as much depth as you would for one main character to multiple. And that is extremely difficult to do, which is arguably why the story is... I don't want to say fumbling or falling to shambles or anything, but it's a lot more difficult to write a story with multiple main characters because each main character has to have what one main character has. And it's very difficult to share that spotlight and write characters as main characters with that much depth and nuance as you would with one because there's only one story being told. 
keeping that in mind, going with that perspective, assuming there is multiple main characters, you can approach this same question from multiple perspectives. What's the question? Well, if the arc is about identity, what has been presented as a possible question, maybe not to the audience, but as an, an analysis breaking it down, you could argue Jura and Karama are arguably saying the same thing from two different lenses, which would be the protagonist versus antagonist clash of ideals. They're asking the question of the arc, well, how do you find your identity in a world as mysterious as this? Karama seems to be, it's accepting it and moving on, uh, getting rid of your preconceived biases and moving forwards. Jura seems to be stuck in the past. He's trying to find out why things are happening. He's not letting things go in that way, which I think could be his downfall, quote unquote. He doesn't know what he's looking for, even though he's trying, whereas Karama He's trying to move forward. It doesn't matter what he's looking for because he's already accepted who he himself is. When you look at the Shinju and their identity, it's almost paradoxical because they're looking for something I believe they already have. For example, they're blinded to the fact that they don't have an identity when they themselves gave themselves a name. They identify as Jura, Hidari, Matsuri, etc. Bug is actually interesting because he could be the antithesis of, the, of that idea if he never named himself. He's not even interested in this identity. But Jura and Hidari, we'll focus on them since they're in the limelight right now, they, as far as I'm aware, named themselves. Why would they do that if they don't know what their identity is? And then they are clearly acting in ways that show their identity, that show that they are unique, that they do stand out. So they're trying to find that not through themselves, not internally, but seeking that validation outwards through other characters who I'm assuming they believe have found their identity themselves, but arguably haven't. Naruto isn't even around to present the possibility of having of an identity right now. Kurama is, in a way, trying to make Himawari awaken to her identity by giving up her preconceived biases or whatever, accepting the outcome moving forward. Uh, you could argue she's done that by this point. That's thanks to Karama, not because of herself, which is almost paralleling the Shinju in a way. It's funny because the Shinju have humanity, but they're also the Tintails. So in a way, they're both. But also, humanity itself is in a way similar to that. It's almost the opposite end of the same coin to where humanity is mostly humans, but partly alien through Kaguya's genetics or whatever. They have chakra. They can use it, all these different abilities, Keke Genkai. So, but like the Shinju, they are the Tintails, but they have humanity, which I think is very interesting, that dynamic there. Do, do you think if, let's say, let's say that is kind of like what they're trying to get at is just, like, what is all of this, what is all of this about, like, kind of who you are, your identity, just on a surface level? Do you think the way, because I'm, I'm thinking, I look at like Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, like you said, the Land of Waves arc, it's written so differently than Boruto, yeah. TBV, almost so much so that you would question if the same person's writing it. It's kind of interesting that, <laughs> but maybe in service of trying to put forth that idea about, you know, this is, this is about identity and trying to figure out who you are, or rather maybe coming to the realization that that is not like some answer that you can come to that's going to be concrete, but it's like an ever evolving thing because you are ever evolving and changing. So you'll never really truly find that. So while they're trying to look for it at some point, I would imagine the Shinju are going to discover themselves just in general, like discover themselves in the process of doing that. But I don't know. I just think it's interesting because it could be like a, like a, a stroke of genius where like we're we're looking at it like oh this is not very deep there's no depth there but it could be well it needs to be written in this way that it appears to be shallow so that later on like the he can execute like the layers of depth that are there but just underneath the surface because if if you can maybe arrive at the conclusions without it being stated in the series so far that's probably for a reason because there's something there to work with. And maybe that is what Kishimoto is working with. I don't know. It's interesting though, the Naruto thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, thank uh, you. Sticking on topic though, last thing I'll say on this, unless we wanted to continue with this. I think 
you could argue it's a stroke of genius. Um, I don't know if it's even intentional is the problem because I'm having to do a lot of work to sort of polish this turd in a sense. Um, comparing that to Naruto, what I really like from stories, maybe this is just personal bias, I really like when the protagonist and antagonist are really set in their ways to have that strong clash of ideals. At least with Naruto, the point is it's about Naruto's failure to change. Because looking at the Zabuza Naruto dynamic, Zabuza and all antagonists of Naruto represent a victim of the world itself. Naruto's trying to change the world. In doing so, the world itself is resisting Naruto, in turn trying to change Naruto, making him give up. Notice how that's a thing. Sorry, do, you, do you mean fail to change or refuse to change? Yeah, well, it's the it's same thing. It's just different wording. But yeah, refusal to change. So with, within Naruto's refusal to change, his stubbornness, the world itself rejecting Naruto, it can't maintain that because it has flaws in it, whereas Naruto doesn't. He remains pure in this sense. So the world changes almost by itself. Through Naruto's stubbornness, his refusal to change. It's not that Naruto's changing the world. Naruto didn't change Zabuza. Naruto allowed Zabuza to change himself by proving to Zabuza the correct path, waking Zabuza up to something that he's had all along. Like Zabuza said, I forget the exact quote, but even shinobi are human, no matter how hard we try to tell ourselves that we're not. You look at yeah, Neji like... and Gara and everyone, Sasuke, Sasori, well, I guess he didn't fight Sasori, but you get the, the idea. Every antagonist up through Obito is the same thing. It's a reflection of... And the embodiment of the world Naruto's trying to change, Naruto's stubbornness, in, in a sense, changes the world because Naruto refuses to change. You take that to Boruto, I don't think they're trying to do the same thing, so you'd have to look at it through a different lens entirely. It's not about the refusal to change. I think Boruto, in a sense, might be trying to change the world itself or something else. That's interesting. Because I, I was like, yeah, like... So basically, Naruto, he's not get, like he's not adding on something that wasn't there. This desire for a better world to be better people is already there, but it's like buried underneath so many layers of like context and complex complexities given the world they live in. All Naruto effectively does is act like a light that points to hey, like this thing here it, it's it's here and through my refusal to like conform to the way thing the way you're saying things are i effectively shine a light on what's already there which is almost this kind of like naive notion that you can be better or do things differently in this type of world which i think kind of gets back to like when kadin senses naruto's chakra relative to sasuke's and she says it's so bright and they always kind of refer to Naruto as like that light, keep him clean and pure while they do like kind of like the dirty work of the gringy stuff. And I think that was a really wise decision that they made for Naruto. Because I do think, yeah, like he, he's that character that kind of shines the light on kind of those desires almost that were always there, but just kind of ignored because just how life is. It, 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 it really does. I think that's one of the brilliant things about the Naruto series. I can always say that it seems timeless it, timeless in terms of like the themes it kind of um relays or, or the themes that it covers from like reality right yeah like the i i think the 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 world right now is in such a state in real life to where it would be very difficult to not make a change or have it change you it would take a revolutionary like <laughs> like generational motherfucker to like having like Hey, to go against the status quo, go against like all these years of established history and in the way of things being done, but then also have like the power and influence to make their their position in the world kind of everyone else's position in the world. Because I always say things have to be backed by power or, or some, by some means, through some means, either power through respect or fear, or whatever the case may be. But nothing can really be resolved from like a, a standpoint of weakness. Because at the end of the day, I think that's the, the beauty of like a battle shown. And I think is that given that 
that I believe that's true, Naruto still needs to fight these people. He still needs to like, hey, you guys are trying to like change the world. Well, one of the ways in which you're trying to do that, shape and mold the world is through your power. So I need to like, once I remove the option of that, then you're going to be like forced to listen to me. And I think he did that with, with Sasuke in particular, where, where once he just beats Sasuke in a fight, Sasuke has no choice but to like lay his ass there and like listen or, or like bear witness to his emotions through like their conflict. But yeah, Naruto as a series just, it, it really is like a fantastic series. I think so. Just, you know, kind of wrapping up my points about it. I think it's fantastic for mm -hmm. sure. And I, I think as far as Boruto goes, I think maybe, maybe it's like a role reversal to where instead of the the villains having like this ideology that they believe in or like this approach or like being the anchor in that sense, the heroes are, the protagonists are. And the villains are the ones trying to answer the questions that the protagonists are asking. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's like a role reversal in that sense. That's yeah. interesting though. Yeah. 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 I want to say something more, but if you guys want to move on, we can. You're almost dragging it out of me. <laughs> not cook, bro. Huh? All right, all right, I'm just saying, if we're if yeah, we're here staying on this for like three hours, don't blame uh, me. Bro, <laughs> okay, okay, bro okay. listen, we making content, okay. bro. We making content. All right. This is why I love what they do with Boruto expanding on Naruto. To get to that, I have to explain Naruto first. Going back to the core crux, the main question, the overarching theme the point of naruto this is why i say it's about the perseverance of humanity because it's not about naruto it's about what naruto does to the world the world itself already has that good essence in it and all for all intents and purposes naruto does change neji gara sasuke obito but really naruto is helping them save themselves from themselves it's very interesting because people saved naruto from naruto as well going back to the original question what does it mean to be a shinobi we get that first question asked by Naruto and Zabuza before Naruto even has his ninja way. This is where he cements his ninja way to fight the world going forwards. Zabuza believes that ninjas are tools. Well, we see the end result of that through Haku. He becomes broken. Why? Whereas Naruto doesn't because Naruto's more vulnerable. He's willing to open up to talk with the shinobi, to talk to his enemies. That's where the talk no jutsu meme comes from. But... It's about the idea, and I think this holds true throughout all of Naruto going into Boruto, and arguably the rest of media. This question, what it really boils down to, is whether or not humanity should have emotion. Because emotion is both humanity's greatest strength and its greatest weakness. Especially for Shinobi, that's why this world rejects emotion. Zabuza isn't even looking at the perspective of where emotion is possible. You have to kill your heart to become a Shinobi. That's what leads to Haku becoming a broken tool. Not just a tool, but a broken one, because Shinobi are human. Whereas Naruto, remaining true, he doesn't become broken or anything like that. He persists, he perseveres, just as humanity does, because he's looking at it from both perspectives. He is looking at the strength that emotion can provide you don't just have to kill your heart to become a shinobi yes if you do that then you can become a strong shinobi just as haku did but through the will of fire or other emotion the strength emotion can provide you as well as its weakness you can become an even stronger person keeping that into boruto you have the question what does it mean to be a shinobi in an era that no longer requires shinobi well again going back to the main question shinobi are human in a essence, this gets down to what does it mean to be human? Which going into to Boruto Tubu Vortex, with the heart of the shinobi persisting despite the era, it's about the perseverance of humanity. Despite shinobi not being required, humanity persists. Going into Boruto, what does it mean to be human through this identity arc, this first arc? And the Shinju and how they present that question, I think is going to be very interesting. And that's all. Well said. <laughs> Well said, well said, well said, very nice. Um, I do have some ideas about that, but yeah. we can um, 